Hello YouTube! Welcome to episode 10 of my Digital Aquarium Controller series. Today we're going to look at designing a custom PCB and try out a testing shield that I had etched. You may remember that back in episode 4 I showed you my hand-wired hat, already built and working. So why print a PCB? Well, I decided it'd be very nice to have a second setup that didn't require the PC power supply and all the components to use as my code testing rig. That way, once I install the main unit in the tank stand, I don't have to risk any ill effect to my tank if I want to develop new code or improvements. It's also just a lot easier to work with. To design the PCB, I used a free online editor, EasyEDA. There's a link in the description. I've given a few other tools a try in the past, and to be honest, I really liked this one. Being cloud-based, it had a huge library of parts, and I was able to find everything I needed. But because it was web-based, it seems they kept it pretty simple, stripped down to just what is commonly needed which, for an amateur like me, made it less overwhelming and easier to figure out how to do the things I wanted to do. The board I designed is really pretty simple though. I started with an Adreno Mega Hat and added the connectors just like my hand-wired one. Then I added a few extra features to make it useful as a desktop test rig. This included extra connections to provide resistors and LEDs to use as indicators instead of connecting the relay boards or lights, and then I added points to add toggle switches in place of the float switch sensors. If you have any experience doing computer drawing, you'll probably find it fairly intuitive. If not, they have some pretty good tutorials and helpful documentation. Ordering is simple. Just click the link to publish the Gerber file, and it takes you to the order page. From there, you can either download the files to order from elsewhere, or make them yourself. Or just or add it to your cart, and then order it from them through JLPCB. The prices were more than reasonable. Ten of the 11 centimeter long boards cost about $25, including shipping. It took about a week and a half for them to arrive at my door. Okay, having the new boards, let's solder on the connectors. I used my extra mega to line up the connectors, first mounting the pins into the mega, then fitting the board onto that. Then I just need to solder all the pins in place. That done, I remove it from the Mega. Next I add the female pin headers for the RTC. Then I test the LEDs and the polarity, and I solder in the LEDs for power in pin 13, along with the resistors that'll limit current to them. Then a pair of filter caps. I designed this all for through hole parts. Having now added most of the long lead parts, trim the excess wire and then begin adding the Molex connectors. I use blue tack to hold the parts in place while I solder. The same PCB is used for the test rig. However, instead of a Molex connectors to attach the relays and sensors, I have LEDs installed to indicate that the signal is sent to activate the device or switches to indicate that a sensor is in a certain state. The LEDs use much less power than the relays, so this can all be powered from the USB to the Adreno, without needing an external power adapter. I have several extra boards. If interested, contact me in the comments and we can try to arrange to get you a couple, along with the instructions. If there's demand, I can order more. Here it is in action. You can see that I can issue it commands over serial, such as this one to turn on the moonlight, and the board responds. Likewise, I can use the Nextian touch display to issue commands and see the output in the serial monitor. This gives me a full working model to test my code against, and I'm very happy with the results. If you enjoyed this, please click like and subscribe, and share any suggestions or questions in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching.